My name is Peter Maloney and I contributed the information uh, within the ephemera collection of Peter Maloney, which is an associated site within King. I was born in Moncrana in County Donegal. Uh, the family moved to Derry when I was about three years of age and subsequently moved to London where I've resided since 1958. Uh, I worked, studied architecture and worked for local authorities in London. The collection contains a, a very large number of photographs of murals and graffiti. Uh, a selection of posters, badges, postcards, stickers, things that would be thrown away that would have a short life, hence the title, uh, a collection of ephemera. Um, the collection is now some 35,000 items. Uh, I started collecting these items in 1966 with the commemoration of the Easter Rising. Uh, with the onset of the Civil Rights Movement, I started collecting the political leaflets and posters uh, that were being handed out at that time. Also, at that time, I was doing quite a bit of lecturing in England at universities or to political groups in England and was using, making slides of the, the posters and the badges to use as a backdrop uh, to lectures and to illustrate the lectures. Subsequently, I began to realise that a lot of the artwork that was being produced in these posters and murals and graffiti was actually quite beautiful in itself. And using the dictate that history is written by the winner, the likelihood was a lot of that material would disappear. Didn't have an idea in, in, in the early 70s that the conflict would have lasted as long as it did. Uh, or that uh, Republican groups uh, would have come out of a victor in it. So the information would have gone. Certainly it would not have been reflected in the history books. And that became a motivation to add to it um, to make it as comprehensive as possible. The largest single element in the collection is photographs of the murals and graffiti from all around the north and a few examples from France and England as well. There are now over 10,000 uh, such photographs. Uh, the next main element would be the collection of political posters uh, and that collection would be about 1500-1600 strong. Uh, I have well over a thousand uh, items of postcards, some of those postcards dating back to 1912 uh, and 1916 from the Easter Rising to the Home Rule Crisis. Uh, but the major part of that collection is postcards from uh, the 70s onwards. Uh, badges, again, that would be a collection of well over a thousand. Political newspapers and leaflets, leaflets about 3,000, political journals about 3,000. Also a collection of books related to the, the history of the Troubles of about 3,000 strong. Uh, and then there are minor collections of things like stickers, uh, bus tickets uh, that were issued during the Troubles that show the confidential telephone number on the reverse side, uh, byrolls that have the names of various organisations written on them, uh, and now you're beginning to add things into the collection like car political cartoons that have been done since the Troubles started. Uh, and photographs of people at demonstrations, uh, plus a wide collection of maybe 3,000 photographs of political banners uh, and the, the paintings on drums that were issued during the troubles. A 
about uh, 15 years ago, I came across the Kane website while doing some research and thought that uh, they might be interested in having uh, the information that was contained within my collection uh, on their digital website. Uh, so subsequently contacted them and they were very interested indeed. Uh, unfortunately, I have not had the time over the subsequent years to update the collection. I think when the collection first went up on the website, I had about 14,000 items catalogued, uh, but that has now grown to over 35,000. Um, I normally would get contacted by about five or six students a year doing a thesis in one thing or another. For example, one student in Spain was doing research on political stickers from around the world. Uh, students doing research on the artwork on record sleeves, uh, somebody doing a thesis on murals. Uh, recently, and interestingly, the last five students I've had have all been architects. Uh, and that has been quite challenging to use the ephemera within the context of architecture and planning. Um, but that, that's been very positive and I've really enjoyed that element of it. Walking about the streets one time, I remember I was photographing the 12th of July demonstration in Belfast up the Crumlin Road, uh, photographing a drum and one of the, the, the bandsmen asked me why I was photographing the drum and I said, oh, I collect stuff for a, a website uh, for the University of Ulster. Because that's quite a safe thing to say. Uh, and he asked me what website, and so I have to tell him it's a political ephemera site of Peter Maloney. I didn't think Maloney was a good name to be bandying about on the 12th of July in the Cromwell Road. But he was very excited. I've seen your website. Do you know you've got both sites on it? <laughs> Which I thought was, you know, that was really happy to uh, get that kind of a positive feedback from uh, a bandsman in the Cromwell Road. Um, while I was collecting over the years, it would normally be about maybe a thousand or, or 1500 items would be added annually to the collection. But I took early retirement uh, three years ago uh, and now that I have more time I'm adding about 5000 items a year to the collection uh, and I would still like to continue to add to make the collection as balanced as possible, to reflect both sides of the conflict. Um, I think the one of the things I need to do over the coming years too is gradually update sections of the collection on the Kane website, the information contained there. Um, and look to the future. I, I, I'm struggling with the future of what I should do with the collection. My attitude is that it should be given to a museum because I think it's now of a scope and quality to be museum worthy. The problem is finding the right museum to give it to.